the house and they'd pack out the furniture and load up the wagons. They were, we figured they weren't figured on staying there. And uh, then they put other fellows out to rounding up the cattle. We had cattle all around there, and I guess in Chupi at that time, we must have had 5,000 head of cattle. Even John Davis, I was telling him about, he, he must have had 500 head of his own. Tom Bader had as many or more. And the Davises and the Williams, they were all in the cattle business. And we had one big fence that went right around the Chupi fields. Every fellow didn't have his own 20 or 40 fence by himself that they had. We built a fence around the whole valley. And so uh, these uh, revolutions then, they were gathering up our cattle, and as fast as they'd get a herd together, they'd just turn them right in on our fields, right inside. And naturally, it's in the summertime in July, our corn was up then, getting up breast high, and the potatoes were all growing nice, and everything was just looking lovely. Well, it wasn't, uh, by night, I guess they had a couple of thousand head of cattle that turned right in on the field, and they turned all their horses in there, so they were just tromping and down more than they were eating. We stayed right on this hill for about four or five days and watched this going on, and there was nothing we could do about it. And the first night, after they had ransacked uh, about half of the homes in town, then they set fire to those that they had ransacked, there were a lot of them, and burned them up to make light so they could go ahead with their looting. And then, if I remember rightly, it was about the fourth or fifth day then we see them begin to leave Chuby with their own wagons, with their own furniture loaded into the wagons, and they took out going back into their country, wherever they came from, and then they turned the cattle out of the fields, and their men were driving our cattle, following up the wagons, and there went our cattle and our furniture and everything. Well, then so... Uh, there was nothing to go back to Chupi for, and we could see they hadn't all gone away from there because we could see there were still men there and uh, was staying there, and there was nothing to go back for, so then we decided the only thing to do was to try to make our way out of the mountain the best we could. You sleep? No. I just... And, uh... <laughs> Well, now that I'm telling you a story, I guess I better finish up uh, part of what happened to us. We we decided right straight that uh, uh, here's something that happened that I've always regretted, but I don't see how we could have done otherwise. Well, in those days, uh, a cattleman always had a dog, and we all, even people that always had a dog, they called a watchdog. And so nearly everybody that was left there had a dog. And uh, when we went back on that mountain with all these dogs, why, on a still morning, you could hear a dog bark for two or three miles. that just carry over, you know. And somebody said, these dogs will give us away. And just as sure as daylight comes, these dogs begin to bark. Why, some of those revolutions will hear uh, where we are, and they'll more than likely come out here because they'll know that we got a bunch of horses out here because they could see when we left our camp there in Chuby that they, we had a lot of horses, and we did have. We had about 75 head of horses. Each man had about two or three head of his own, so when we got them all together, they were mostly saddle horses and pack horses, pack mules. And so then, uh, well, uh, by golly, everybody thought, well, I, I don't want my dog killed, and uh, yeah, I don't like to have my dog killed. Well, we don't any of us like to have our dogs killed, but what, so, what are we trying to save, our dogs' lives or our lives? And so it's a, it's, it's a question of uh, uh, having to do this. And so uh, we call a vote on this and see, and see what the majority of it. So we called a vote on it, and the majority was for killing the dogs. Well, I got my father said, I won't kill my dog. And so there was one man in the, in the camp, I don't need to mention his name, but he said, well, you follow take your dogs down there in the canyon and tie them up, and I'll go down there and kill every one of them. So each man laid his dog down there and tied his dog up, and this fellow went down and he killed the dogs. And that's one thing I've always regretted, but yet I don't see how we could have done otherwise.
And so then we decided now that everything had been destroyed as far as our homes and our crop and everything and our wives and children were out in the United States and we didn't know how they were being taken care of because we hadn't heard any more word about them. And so we thought the best thing for us to do now is to try to make our way out to the United States. And we knew that the mountains and all the country was just saturated with revolutionists and the rebels all over thieves. And, and we knew that if they ran on to us with our a bunch of horses, why they would naturally take us prisoners and take everything we had. So we decided that we would not get onto any trail or any road that anybody else could be following. We've got to stay right back in the, in the rough part of the mountain to try to make our escape out because we had about 200 miles to make.